Hey guys, this is Arun from Chikon Figurations and welcome to the full review and unboxing of the Lenovo Y P1. The Lenovo Y P1 is the only smartphone to offer a fingerprint scanner in this price range which is below 16,000 rupees. Apart from that, it features a full metallic build, a huge 4900 mAh battery with fast charging. I mean, what else can you ask more? Talking about specifications, the Y P1 features a 5.5 inch Full HD IPS display with Corning Gorilla Glass 3 protection. Snapdragon 615 chipset, Adreno 405 GPU, 3 GB of RAM, 32 GB of internal memory, 13 megapixel primary camera with face detection autofocus, and a dual tone dual LED flash, 5 megapixel secondary camera, and 4900 mAh battery with fast charging by 24 watt charger. Now, coming to the unboxing, the first thing out of the box is the Lenovo Wipe P1 itself with full metallic build and a fingerprint scanner, but we will talk about it later. The Lenovo has also provided a transparent case and a screen guard which definitely save you some money. The next thing we could find is a couple of booklets such as quick starter guide and the warranty card. Whereas a micro USB cable and a 24 watt travel charger is also provided in the box. The Lenovo has also provided the micro USB to USB 2.0 adapter which makes it possible to connect it even to a standard USB pen drive. The Lenovo Y P1 also has the capability to charge other devices with the help of the adapter provided in the box. Talking about the design, the Y P1 features a full metallic build with a 5.5 inch Full HD display with Corning Gorilla Glass protection. The front panel features a 5 megapixel front camera and an earpiece on the top whereas the two capacity buttons and a hard key with fingerprint scanner are placed at the bottom. By the way, the capacity buttons provided here do light up. The voice reception mic USB 2.0 and the two speaker grills are placed at the bottom whereas 3.5mm audio port and the noise cancellation mic are placed at the top. The volume blockers and the lock and low key are placed at the right hand side whereas the dedicated switch for enabling the power saving mode is provided on the left hand side. The back panel features a metallic build and houses 13 megapixel primary camera with dual tone dual LED flash and Lenovo branding. Removing the top plastic cap reveals a SIM tray which can support two nano SIM, both of which can support LTE connectivity and a micro SD card slot which is expandable up to 128 GB. Coming to the user interface, the Wipe P1 runs on Android 5.0 Lollipop with Wipe UI on the top which was well customized and very responsive and more importantly the fingerprint scanner was lightning fast in recognizing the fingerprints. The new Wipe UI also features an option to choose between two different launchers, the Wipe UI launcher without app drawer or Android Lollipop launcher with dedicated app drawer. Now coming to the dialer, the Wipe P1 also features the customized dialer but had no option for direct video calling. There was also a shortcut to LO page integrated into the dialer which allows the user to get info about any business by entering the name and location. The messaging application does support SwiftKey and had no lag or delay in texting whereas the drop down menu was also heavily customized with a ton of quick toggle icons such as NFC, screenshot, cast screen, flashlight and also had option to add or rearrange some icons if you want. The Lenovo Y P1 also supports multiple user profiles as well as two different zones namely open zone and secure zone which can be easily switched from the drop down menu. Secure zone allows the user to keep some private space on the smartphone protected by a discrete lock pattern. Images or data captured or stored in the secure zone won't be available in the open zone, thus ensuring a well-defined partition between your private and public space. There was also option available to adjust the screen brightness or switch to auto brightness which also means it does have ambient light sensor. The screenshot feature provided the drop down menu enables to limit the screenshot to any particular area of the screen apart from capturing the whole. Talking about the storage, out of 32 GB of internal memory, approximately 24 GB is user available, whereas out of 2 GB of RAM, 1.2 GB is available, which is great considering the fact that the UI is taking only 800 MB of RAM apart from having such a good amount of customization. Now, talking about the moving of apps in the memory card. Even though Wipe P1 does not support moving of apps in memory card individually, but if you choose the memory card as the default right disk, you can move all the installed apps to memory card but no app data. The glove mode or the high sensitivity mode is provided inside the display settings, whereas the different lock screen themes are provided inside the lock screen settings. 
there is a new feature tab inside the settings under which we could find the options like quick snap, knock to light, micro screen, smart screen, white touch and flip screen. The quick snap allows the user to capture pictures from the primary camera by double pressing the volume control keys when the display is turned off. The knock to light feature allows the user to double tap and wake the screen whereas the micro screen feature is just a one hand mode with adjustable screen size. The smart screen allows the user to schedule different profiles for different locations such as home, office, school which the device automatically recognizes based on the GPS, Wi-Fi LAN network or even based on the time schedule. Whereas the flip screen automatically turns off the screen when the device is flipped down or placed vertically inside the pocket. Talking about the fingerprint settings, the device can only store a maximum of two fingerprints whereas the theme center allows to apply different themes, wallpapers, lock screen and even a two different themes for recent task list. The Lenovo style recent task list is customized version and the user can slide right or left to get apps and could also lock the app by sliding down while sliding up will close the app instantly. Whereas the Android L task list was just stock Android just like the other devices. Now coming to the display quality, as I already said it features a 5.5 inch full HD display with uniform viewing angles and great color reproduction. But I felt the brightness was slightly down compared to other devices in this price range. Talking about the multimedia performance, the Lenovo Y P1 was able to handle both 720p and 1080p videos. The 720p video playback was ultra smooth as we would expect and had no buffering while skipping, while there is also option provided for minimized player. Now coming to the 1080p video playback, it was also smooth and had no buffering in skipping, just like the 720p video while it also supported minimized player. Sadly, the device doesn't support 4K video playback but it's not a big deal since very few devices are capable of doing it in this price range. Talking about the camera department, the Y P1 features a 13 megapixel primary camera with face detection autofocus. It did support touch focus, autofocus, face detection, HDR and also had 3 shooting modes such as normal, panorama and effects. It can record videos in 1080p and does support simultaneous video and image capturing whereas the user can also touch focus during video recording as well. The images captured from the device was pretty great in terms of focusing and exposure whereas the HDR mode functioned well under the high back lid condition. The secondary camera on Y P1 features a 5 megapixel sensor and it does support touch focus, face detection and had 3 capturing modes such as touch, timer and auto selfie. The secondary camera also supports 1080p video recording with simultaneous image and video capturing but the lack of HDR mode made the images appear dark in high backlit condition. Now coming to the performance aspect, the Y P1 scored 36,905 in Antu 2 which is a good score whereas in Nina Mark 2 it scored 59.6 FPS which also means you could play high end games on this device without any issues. We have tested the gaming performance of the device and it was running very smooth even in full graphic settings and had no heating or lagging issues even after 45 minutes of intense gaming. Talking about the browsing performance, since there was no dedicated browser, we had to do the test in the Chrome browser itself. The pages loaded very fast and had no jitteriness even in fast zooming, but the jQuery transition effects provided on our official page was slightly jittery. Now coming to the touch input, the Y P1 support a full 10 point touch whereas in terms of sensors it has all the basic sensors like accelerometer, proximity, light, magnetic, orientation, gyro and many more. The Y P1 also supported LED notification light and as I already said it does support OTG connectivity. Now coming to the battery test, we were able to fully charge the device in 1 hour 30 minutes which is totally awesome considering the fact that it is having 4900 mAh battery but all credits goes to the fast charging technology with 24W charger. 15 minutes of 1080p video playback in full brightness full sound resulted in 2% of battery drop whereas 15 minutes of high end gaming in full brightness full sound dropped about 4% of battery. 15 minutes of video recording also dropped 4% of battery and finally 15 minutes of camera usage without video recording dropped about 4% of battery. So as you could see from the figures itself, this is the best device in this price range in terms of battery backup. All the figures are almost half of what we could expect from devices in this price range. So now coming to the pros and cons. 
The first positive thing about the device is that it supports 4G connectivity on both SIM. Second positive thing is that it features a 5.5 inch 1080p display which was totally great in terms of viewing angles. The third positive thing is that it features a Gorilla Glass 3 protection and a full metallic build which ensure a very high durability of this device. The fourth positive thing is that it features a fingerprint scanner which is totally unique in this price range and was very quick and accurate in terms of recognition. The fifth positive thing is that it features a great processor which is Snapdragon 615 which had no heating issues or lagging issues in our test. The sixth positive thing is that it features a 32GB internal memory which is expandable up to 128GB. Seventh positive thing is the good camera as we already know it features a 13 megapixel primary camera and a 5 megapixel secondary camera which was very good in terms of performance. Eighth positive thing is that it does support OTG connectivity and had all the basic sensors. The ninth positive thing is the well customized UI which was very very responsive. The tenth positive thing is the huge 4900 mAh battery with fast charging technology which makes it stand out from any other devices in this price range. Now talking about the codes, the first thing I would like to mention is the display brightness. I feel the display brightness of the device was slightly low compared to other devices in this price range. The second negative thing is that out of the two speaker grills provided at the bottom, only one is functional. So, so that is little demerit. Third negative thing is that it does not support HDR mode on the front camera which I think they should have provided. And the last and final negative thing I could find is that uh, the device doesn't support 4K video playback. So guys that's pretty much about the review, unboxing and pros and cons of the Lenovo Y P1. If you have any more questions you can just comment it below. I usually try to answer each and every one of them. If you want more information about this device you can just log on to our website. The link is provided in the description. So thanks for watching this video and if you like this video please hit like and stay subscribed. Thank you.